Now, how do we calculate the probabilities related to z-scores and for normal distributions? Um, well, we can use what's called the empirical rule. If you remember this one from before. So let's say here's our graph. Um, so we know that 68% of all data are within one standard deviation of the mean. So under this, um, between minus one and one here, under the curve, we have 68% of our data. Um, 95% of our data are within two standard deviations away from the mean. Here we are, and 99.7% of our data are within three standard deviations, so from the minus three to the three. Um, if our data value is beyond three standard deviations, we call it an outlier. So let's say if we had data below um, minus three here in this region, we would call it an outlier, or if we had data above here, we call that an outlier. An outlier is obviously not very common. There's almost no area under the curve um, on either side there. Okay, now, if we didn't have um, z-scores perfectly one, two, or three, how else would we calculate probabilities? Well, Excel does a beautiful job of it. So let's use the Excel function, so norm.dist. Um, we use that when we want to get the probabilities related to x values. Okay. Um, so if we wanted the probability between two different x values, um, you would use the norm.dist. We'll talk more about that later. And if you want um, the uh, actual x values themselves and you're given the probability, um, then you would use the norm.in. So let's say now we're given this probability. We want the x values between um, those two areas uh, or anything else. You would use your norm.in. We're going to look a lot more at that later. Okay. Um, now, using the norm.dist first, let's examine that first. Um, okay, so we use um, norm.dist to calculate the area to the left of an x value, so this green area here. Norm.dist returns the area to the left. Okay. If we need the area to the right, what do we do? We use 1 minus norm.dist. Why? Because the total area under this curve is 1. So if you just want kind of the other half of it or the other piece of it, we know that this blue area, which would be given by the norm dot, this blue area is this area to the left. And so if we want the area instead to the right, we do 1 minus that. Or if you will, that's like taking the complement. Um, so if ever we want the area to the right of an x score, we go and do one minus the norm.dist. Okay, what if we want the area between two x values? Um, we subtract the norm.dists, uh, put the largest one first, smallest x value next, subtract those two norm.dists. Okay, <clears throat> so let's look at an example here. Let's say we had a mean of 1,010, a standard deviation of 20, and let's say, for example, in the first case here, we wanted to calculate um, the probability that x is below 1,040. Okay, so we use our norm.dist um, and we put in the x value and then we put in the mean um, and then we put in the standard deviation and then a 1. 1 means cumulative, it means get the actual, um, <clears throat> all of the probability at that value or below it. Um, so when we plug this into Excel, we get 0.9332 for this norm dot this. We're going to try this in a minute. Uh, and let's say we had the probability, um, or we wanted the probability that x is above the 1,040. So again, like this picture right here, we want the area to the right. Um, to get that, we need to use a 1 minus norm dot dist, plug in the 1,040, which is our x value, then plug in our mean, our standard deviation, and always a 1. Okay, so let's go try this out in Excel. Okay, so here we are. So I've just entered the mean of 1,010, standard deviation of 20. Um, so probability that x is less than 1,040. We just use the equals norm dot dist, um, put in the 1,040, put in that mean. I'm just going to lock the reference. You don't have to in this case, but you can. Uh, standard deviation and then a 1, always a 1 here. Okay. Now, what is the probability that x is above 1,040? Well, two ways of doing this. You can either retype it equals norm dist of 1,040, 1,010, the 20, and the 1, uh, and take 1 minus that. Okay. 
um, or a little bit quicker since we already have the calculation, um, I can just take one minus the 0.993 because that was the area to the left of the 1040 and I just want the area to the right so I just do one minus that. Okay. Now finally, what if I wanted the probability of x being between two different values? So I want the area between two x values. Um, so let's say 9, uh, 955 and 1035. Sorry, a little typo there. Um, so we wanted this area here. Well, what we do is we subtract the two norm dot disks. Um, okay, take the larger one first, so the 1035 first, and then the 955. Let's try this out in Excel. Okay, so here we are. So we want to be between 955 and 1035. And to do this in Excel, again, we just subtract the two norm dot disks. You could actually even just grab the, um, the text off of the PowerPoint here uh, and just paste that straight in here if you wanted. Um, and, okay. So do the norm dot disk to the 1035 first. And what I like to do is I just copy Control C, Control V that, and then just change the second value to 955. And then here we are. So the answer 0.8913 one four when you round it, sorry, 0.89137. Um, you can keep as many decimals as you want or not when you're working in Excel. If you're punching an answer into the MyStatLab or the Learning Hub, just be careful or be mindful to um, <clears throat> watch for decimals.